This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you have a special occasion and need a showstopper dish, tachin morg or chicken tachin is the answer. This stunning Persian dish has both the looks and taste to blow away your guests. The outer layers of crispy saffron rice surround juicy pieces of chicken, all coated in a mouth-watering tangy Barbary gravy. Every single bite is filled with fantastic textures and flavors, and it has me drooling just at the memory of it. This showstopper of a dish begins by making a super flavorful chicken stock and reducing it to a gravy. You'll then make bright yellow saffron rice and assemble the two together before baking. On the stove, place a large stainless steel pot over medium high heat. Once heated, add one tablespoon of vegetable oil, then you add pieces of chicken. I'm using chicken thighs, though any bone and cut works. You need one and a quarter kilogram and fry these in batches to not overcrowd the pan. Place the pieces skin side down and brown them for about four to five minutes until they turn this wonderful golden color. Flip them over and fry them on the second side for another four to five minutes. Browning chicken like this is a messy process, but the color that the chicken develops adds so much flavor to the stock, so it's so worth it. Once they're browned all over, take them out of the pan and repeat with the remaining chicken. You should now have a load of rendered chicken fat and brown bits in the pan, and they'll make the stock taste next level. Now take two medium onions and slice them into thin slices about this big. Scrunch the slices together to separate the layers, then add the onions to the pot. Shake over one and a half teaspoons of salt and then mix and start cooking the onions. Cook for about five minutes over medium high heat until they soften and go translucent. At this point, add in a small stick of cinnamon and put the chicken back in the pot. Pour over about three liters or enough water to completely submerge the chicken, then turn the heat up to high. As the pot comes up to a boil, loads of bubbly scum will float to the top. Use a strainer or ladle to remove as much of the scum from the surface as you can. Once it boils, turn the heat to a simmer on medium heat and cover with a lid. Let the chicken simmer for about 30 to 40 minutes so it can cook through. While it's simmering, it's time to prep some barberries. These little sour berries are an important ingredient in Persian cuisine. They add a fruity sourness to dishes, but they're not sweet like pomegranate seeds. You can get them at any Middle Eastern or Persian grocery store. Add 150 grams of dried barberries to a bowl, pour over some water and give them a quick wash. Drain the water and they're now ready to use. When the timer for the stock goes off, you'll have a golden stock filled with perfectly cooked chicken. Remove the pieces of chicken leaving behind the onions, and now you'll reduce this into a gravy. To flavor, add one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of ground cardamom, and then all of the washed barberries. Mix together well, then bring the temperature up to medium and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from making the chicken and gravy a day ahead, but if you're doing it all at once, it's time to start the rice. Despite saffron's reputation as being fancy, saffron rice is an everyday thing in Persian cuisine. Their fancy version of rice is actually crispy saffron rice or tahdik. You pay extra for it at restaurants. The signature crunch can be difficult to achieve, and so having crispy rice is a mark of a good chef. This technique I'm about to show you makes it easy for anyone to make tahdik. First thing you need is basmati rice. There's many different versions of this, but I recommend the seller variety. It's practically a cheat code. Seller basmati is parboiled during harvesting, and that makes it more nutritious and nuttier tasting than regular basmati. But what makes it truly special is that it is much sturdier. When cooked, the grains double in size, but unlike other varieties, these grains aren't delicate. They stay intact. This is a game changer when it comes to making layered rice dishes, and since discovering it, we've completely stopped using any other type of basmati. Now take three cups or about 600 grams of sella or regular basmati rice and give it a thorough wash to remove the starch. About three to four times should get rid of most of it. Once you've washed the rice, you have to use it right away, otherwise the grains can crack. If like me, you prefer to wash your rice during prep time, leave it soaking in some room temperature water until it's needed. To make tachin, the rice needs to be pre-cooked. Now this is gonna sound weird, but trust me, the best way to make perfectly fluffy basmati rice is to cook it just like pasta. Fill a large pot with water and place it on high heat. Add a bunch of salt, then when it comes to a boil, add your washed rice in. Boil it for about two to three minutes, then check it every 20 seconds after that by tasting. Once the grains feel cooked, remove the rice from the boiling water and put them straight in a bowl filled with cold water to stop the cooking. The grains have grown massively and they're all intact and not sticking together at all. That's what I call perfect. Drain the rice in a colander and you now have parboiled rice. This is the best hack for making layered rice dishes. To turn that plain rice into tahdig, you first need to make a saffron mixture that gives the rice its signature gold color and delicate floral aroma. In a mixing bowl, add 250 grams of thick Greek yogurt, one whole egg, then two egg yolks minus the whites, and a bunch of liquid saffron. To make this, you obviously start with saffron. Unfortunately, it's the world's most expensive spice, and this recipe requires about half a gram, but don't let that stop you. You can use less or leave it out. Add the saffron into a mortar, then add a little bit of salt for some grit, and grind the saffron into a powder. 
Once it's completely pulverized, add 100 milliliters of boiling water and let the saffron bloom for 15 minutes. When it has finished blooming, it will have an intense gold color and aroma. Pour that into the mixing bowl. Add 30 grams of vegetable oil, one teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Use a whisk to break up the egg yolks and mix it together until smooth. The color of the mixture should be egg yolk yellow. Ours was a little pale, so I added some more saffron liquid, but you can use coloring instead. Now add the rice to a large mixing bowl, then pour over the golden liquid. Use a spatula to gently fold the rice and liquid together, being careful not to break or crush the rice. You'll be left with uniformly colored gold rice, and that's going to be perfect for the tachin. Back to the stove and the pot should be done simmering. The barberries will be plump and the onions will mostly dissolve, leaving with a beautiful glossy gravy. Thanks to the chicken stock, it's going to be packed with loads of flavor. Now let's reintroduce the chicken. Remove and discard the skins from the piece of chicken, then take the meat off the bones. Tear it into bite-sized chunks like this. Add the chicken to a mixing bowl, pour some of the gravy on top and mix the two together. You want it pretty saucy, but not soaking, so adjust it until it looks like this. The flavor of the sauce combined with the chicken make for an incredible combination. Set it aside as well as any leftover sauce. Before we assemble the tachin, let's chat about how Squarespace, our sponsor, can help you share your passion for food online. If you've ever tried to set up a website, there are so many barriers that make it difficult to get started. Squarespace simplifies the entire process so you don't have to worry about designing a website or technical things like how to host it. All you need to do is pick a template and fill it with the content that you want. It can't be simpler to customize and there's a massive library of pre-built sections that you can drag and drop onto your website in seconds. So if you want to share foods you love online, start building your website on Squarespace. Then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash middle eats to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now to assemble the tachin in the pot or pan you're going to cook it in. You'll get the best results by using something non-stick with curved edges and you also need a lid. This is what I'm using. Add about 40 grams of vegetable oil to the pot or pan, then preheat it on the stove. Once the oil is shimmering, add about two thirds of the rice to the pot. Spread it along the base and walls to fully coat them. Spread the rice to an evenly thick layer and ensure the bottom of the walls isn't thin as this area can be delicate. Once you have a well-formed shell, add in the chicken. Spread it right to the edges of the shell and make sure the layer is evenly thick. Flatten it out and level it with the rice before you move on. Add the remaining rice on top of the chicken, spread it evenly, then flatten it out with the back of the spatula. That's the hard part done. Take 30 grams of butter cubes and place them evenly spread out on top of the rice. Cover the pot with a lid and then bake it in a preheated 180 degrees Celsius oven for 45 minutes. When the 45 minutes are done, remove the lid and then return the pot to the oven for another 20 to 30 minutes. When it's almost done cooking, head over to the stove to make some glazed barberries for garnish. In a small pot, combine 15 grams of butter and two teaspoons of sugar. Cook on medium heat until the butter melts and the sugar dissolves, then add in 50 to 75 grams of barberries. Of course, wash them like before. Mix these well with the butter and cook for two to three minutes. They're ready when they puff up and start rounding in shape. When the tachin has finished its second timer, this is what it should look like. It should have crispy edges that are pulled away from the walls of the pot, and the top should have crisped and dried out a little. If the surface of yours doesn't feel crisp and dry, you can let it go for a bit longer. Because the tachin is pulled away from the side of the pan, it's a good sign that it will release. Let it sit for about 10 minutes to cool and firm up a little, and then it's time to get this out. Place a large platter on top of the pot, and then while carefully gripping the two together with a cloth, flip the whole thing over. Thanks to the non-stick pan, it should release and slide out easily. And fingers crossed yours looks as perfect as this does. Our pan actually has terrible heat distribution, which makes it hard to get the middle super crispy, but the edges are perfect. Now to give the statue a little makeup. Garnish it with the candied barberries and some pistachio slivers on top for contrast. Give it a good amount of both to turn it into a showstopper for your next celebration. You even serve it just like a cake. Cut out large slices to reveal the flavorful chicken interior. And don't forget to serve plenty of sauce with each slice. Check that baby out. That looks so, so good. And of course we need some more of that sour onion sauce. Mmm. Ooh. Oh man. It's official. Tashin tastes as good as it looks. Those barberries add just the right amount of sourness. If you're looking for a new centerpiece dish, try this one out or try one of the other ones we've made on the channel.